Welcome to Master Math. Today we're going to be talking about statistics and how to choose a good data display. If you've got a set of data and you need to communicate what this data says to other people, or you need to understand it yourself, you need to figure out what way you're going to display this data. We've looked at bar graphs, and we've looked at scatter plots, and we've looked at box and whisker, and we've looked at other ways to display data. And we're going to go into a little more detail today and talk about what makes a good data display. Let's say you've been hired by the political party in your state to summarize a bunch of data that surveyors collected from prospective voters on how they feel on some key issues. The amount of data is huge. There's thousands of answers and you couldn't go to the papers and, and give them this information. It wouldn't mean anything to them. You need to find a way to summarize this data so you communicate well what the data says. Now you've got a number of options to do this. There's a pie chart or a circle graph. There's a scatter plot. There's a line chart or line graph. How about a histogram or a bar chart? Or a box and whisker? or a stem and leaf. There's all kinds of ways you can summarize this data. Well, which would you choose? Well, fortunately or unfortunately, there's not a simple set of rules to follow. You've just got to use your judgment. You've got to figure out what's the best way to communicate the information you have. And the best way means, number one, you communicate it so it's easy to understand. Number two, you communicate it so it's unambiguous and not confusing. And number three, you need to communicate it so it doesn't distort the information or mislead the person that's looking at the information. Well, let's take an example. I've got a chart here, a table that shows the weights of 14-year-old kids. On the left is a range of weights and on the right is the number of people surveyed who fell within those ranges. Well, we could probably summarize this information in a, in a variety of data displays. Let's look at a couple and see what seems to make sense. We could put this in a pie chart or a circle graph. We could have a color representing each of these ranges of weights. For instance, less than 40 pounds is dark blue. And let's see, where would that dark, that be right there, I think. And then 40 to 50 pounds would be red. So that'd be right there. I got that one. 50 to 60 pounds is there. 60 to 70 pounds is there. Well, and, and I think you see how this works, but I tell you what, I look at that pie chart and it doesn't really tell me anything real quickly. I don't think it communicates the information real well. Let's try a different kind of chart. How about a bar graph or a histogram? This is a bar graph because we're showing not specific numbers, but we're showing categories along the x-axis. A bar graph has categories along the x-axis and for each of those categories you show how it relates to the other variable which in this case is frequency. So I can see on here that under 40 pounds represented a frequency of about 40 and I can see that 40 to 50 pounds represented a frequency of about 58. And I can see that 50 to 60 pounds represented a, a frequency of maybe close to 70. And this communicates a lot of information that the, the pie chart doesn't. I can see that, boy, there's a lot more uh, examples or frequency of weights of about 110 to 130. There's a lot of weights in that group, and it, it tails off at either end. It's a little bit 
like a bell curve, which if you don't know about, you will soon. So I think that the bar graph explains this data a whole lot better. Well, here's another set of data. This chart is explaining how many visitors there were at various social media sites. And it explains a lot. I mean, I can see that Facebook is clearly the biggest social media site, and Twitter has only a third as many visitors as Facebook, and LinkedIn and MySpace and Google Plus are way below Facebook. But there still may be a better way to explain this information and communicate this information to somebody else. There may be a more attractive way to do it. There may be a way to do it that's a little easier for some people to follow. Now, you remember in the last example... A pie chart didn't seem to work very well. Well, let's see what a pie chart does with this data. Well, I, I think it works a lot better. I can look at this data, and it can pretty quickly uh, be seen that Facebook is the big boy, and that Twitter is considerably smaller, and the other three are a, a lot less. So I think that a pie chart works much better with this set of data than with the previous set of data. And I think one of the reasons why is we've only got five categories here. And in the last example, we had about 15 categories. And if you divide this pie chart up into a whole bunch of little teeny slices, it's pretty hard to understand what it's saying. But with a limited number of choices, that pie chart works pretty well. How about a bar graph? Well, that works pretty well. I don't think this is an attractive a display as this is. But it explains the data, and it explains something with a little bit more detail than the pie chart, because I know the exact numbers for each of those bars. And that lets me see pretty clearly that there are three times as many visitors to Facebook as there are to Twitter. And I can't really see that over here. Of course, I could add data numbers to each of these pie slices and give this a little bit more information and probably improve on it. How about a scatter plot? Does that work? Well, on the scatter plot, I can go up and see that Facebook is about, oh, it looks like 750. And Twitter, oh, yeah, it's about 250. But I don't think this is nearly as, as attractive as the pie chart. If I were creating a brochure trying to explain something, I'm pretty sure I'd use this as opposed to this, because this is visually much more engaging. People are going to look at that and find it appealing much more than this. Well, here's another set of data. This one shows the number of car sales in thousands during the month of February in 2011 for Ford, Chevy, Toyota, and Honda. And again, this chart explains quite a bit, but I may be able to communicate this in a little bit better fashion. And let's look at a, a couple of ways I could do this. I could create a bar chart. And along the x-axis, I'd have categories for Ford, Chevy, Toyota, Honda, and Nissan. And then I'd have a bar coming up that, that lined up with the volume level for the month of February for that brand. Well, I think this communicates this information pretty well. I can tell the exact number, or pretty close to the exact number of the sales, and I can compare Ford, Chevy, Toyota, Honda, and Nissan pretty easily. So I think that's a good data display. How about this one? Now this is exactly the same information. I've got Ford, Chevy, Toyota, Honda, Nissan, and I've got their February 2011 sales in thousands. But it doesn't look at all the same. It makes it look like Ford is much, 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 much bigger than Nissan or Honda. Over here, Nissan looks like it's maybe half the size of Honda. Over here, Nissan looks like it's no more than 5 or 10% of a Honda. Why, why, why is that? Well, let's look at the y-axis. You can see in this case, I started the y-axis at 80. And over here, I started the y-axis at 0. By starting the y-axis at 80, 
I've missed a good deal of the bottoms of each of these. I'm spreading out the difference between Ford and Nissan over a smaller range. So it makes those differences much more dramatic and it miscommunicates the reality. You're going to you're distorting the data by changing that start point on your y-axis data from 0 to 80. And you've miscommunicated the information and this is bad data display. Well, here's the same data on the car sales for the month of February 2011. But I've, I've displayed it in a different fashion. I've used a pictograph. And the way a pictograph works is this. Instead of creating a bar or a chart or a, uh, a graph, I create a logo for each or a picture for each of the categories. And in this case, I use the logo for Ford to represent uh, Ford sales. And each of these logos is about 30,000 car sales. So for Ford, who had about 150,000 car sales, I divide 150,000 by 30,000 because each of these logos represents 30,000. So I got five logos to represent the car sales for Ford. Chevy had a little bit less than 150,000, so I'm going to have a little bit fewer than five. I got one, two, three, four, and a, a fraction. Toyota had a few fewer than that, so it's got a little smaller, uh, fewer number of logos. Honda had 87,000, uh, so it's got about three logos. And Nissan had about three logos, too. Is this a good way to describe the data? Well, it can be. But there were a couple of things done in this, in this uh, pictograph that distort things. The biggest thing is this. These logos better be about the same size or it's going to distort the information. I've got one, two, three, four, five Ford logos and one, two, three, four, almost five Chevy logos. But if I look at this, it looks like Ford outsold Chevy uh, considerably more than 5 or 10 percent. So, if you're going to use a pictograph, make sure each of your little uh, pictures are about the same size. Here's another data example. It shows the number of housing starts in thousands by year. And there's a lot of data there, and I don't think many people would be able to understand what all that data represented or what it meant. I don't think they get much meaning out of this in this chart or table form. I think you need to find a data display that's going to summarize this. So let, let's try a couple. Let's try a pie chart. And you can see that in the pie chart, I've created slices that represent a year. 1994 is that darkest color and 1998 is a couple of colors in and I, I, I don't I don't like this and the biggest reason I don't think this works is that there are too many categories there are too many data points and a pie chart's not good when you've got lots and lots of data points it doesn't communicate that well e communicate that information easily let's look at a, uh, a bar graph I think that communicates the information much much better you can follow the progress and you can see the increase in the number of housing starts per year each year up to about 2005 and then you can see this dramatic drop-off when the housing market fell apart. So I think in this case that bar graph communicates this information much much better. Well now we're going to let you try one and you know, you get better at picking a good data display the more you do this. Because there aren't a bunch of simple rules, you've just got to develop the art and the skill of figuring out how to display this data uh, in an unambiguous way that communicates well and doesn't, doesn't deceive people. So, it may take you a while to do this problem because you may have to try various different types of data display before you come up with one that you think really works. So hit your pause button, try to find a way to display this data, and try several until you find something that you think works. 
and then hit your forward key to see what my solution was. Man, we're trying to communicate to people how much rainfall there is in this particular location by the season. And the table explains that pretty well. The winter months have uh, the least rain. The summer months have the most rain. And then that it communicates it pretty well. But it may be more attractive and it may be quicker to understand if we display this data in some other fashion. Let's, let's try a couple. Let's do a pie chart. And I think that works pretty well. I can look at this pie chart and I can see that that period, which is summer, has by far the most rain. And I can see that winter has the least rain. So that communicates pretty well. How about a bar chart? Well, I think that gives me more information. I think it gives me more information because, number one, I can see the relative amount of rain by season, and I can see that graphically or visually. And number two, I can take that over and get an amount. I can see that in the summer, I've got a little bit less than 30 inches. So I think that bar chart is the best way to communicate this information. All right, we've got some data over here which compares the years of education completed with the starting salary. And the table explains things pretty well. I know that if I complete 10 years of education, I can expect to have a starting salary of $18,250. And all the way up to if I had completed 19 years of education, my starting salary would be $63,450. And we've created a uh, line chart to explain that information. It starts down there and then it goes up and you can see that as you get more education it goes up and that, that you know that gives me a general idea of how education level um, relates to starting salary but is this a misleading graph? Is this confusing or distorting reality? Well yes it is and you remember that if we don't start our axes at zero, then we compress the line chart and make it flatter than it is. It's also true that if we take our top number on the y-axis up to a, a, an unnecessarily large number, then we're going to flatten the graph even further. Let's look at a, 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 the same bar graph, or excuse me, the same line chart with the y-axis appropriately done. We start the y-axis here at 0 and only go up to 70. And that makes a lot of sense because the, the largest data number we've got is 63,000. And when we do that, we've got the same line, but it's much more dramatic how that education increases uh, your earning power than it is in this line where we flattened it out because we messed up with our y-axis. Well, that's our lesson on choosing a data display. And by now, you can probably see that this is, this is more art than science, and you've just got to use good judgment. And you've got to remember that you want to communicate well with this data display that you choose. And communicate well means, number one, that what you draw is easy to understand. Number two, that it's unambiguous and unconfusing. And number three, that it doesn't distort the information or mislead your viewer. Well, now let's test your understanding of this concept. Let's go to www.mastermath.info and download the worksheet on choosing a data display. After you've done that worksheet, go back to MasterMath and try the quiz on choosing a data display. I hope you had a really good time. And I hope to see you again soon.